Hi everybody, this is Christy here. Um, I had um, kind of debated about uh, going ahead and doing this uh, segment um, on um, what God says about us. So I had mentioned at the, the last segment that this was going to be my next step and then um, just a, an aside and, and a, um, just being transparent and authentic, uh, just know that whether you are someone who has served God for you know your entire life or you're just starting out, you can rest assured that the, as you start making steps to deepen your walk with God, um, you're going to be faced with opposition and so the the content of my segments is literally just whatever I'm studying at the moment and it's kind of a I guess a narrative of of where I'm going um, the direction that I'm going right now so I have been talking about um, peace because uh, peace is something that's very important to me and peace had been uh, very much being challenged in my in my life and so I was like well we're gonna dig into peace because the um, I'm I'm kind of a non-confrontational type person I, I don't like conflict but I'm very um, I don't know if the words headstrong I, I I've been called stubborn before but um, when I know that I'm on the right track and then you know I feel um, like opposition to it it just makes me it doesn't make me want to quit it makes me want to double down and um, dig a little faster and dig a little harder and just be like watch me so um, that that's kind of where I have been in stepping out and doing these videos because just as soon as you um, openly plant a stake in the ground in especially for things of the, of the spirit whenever you're you're trying to um, be be a witness and and to um, share um, God with people there there is going to be opposition so that part didn't really surprise me but um, Anyway, so we, I just realized my hair is really organic looking today. But anyway, so here, here's the thing. So I, I talked about peace and then we talked about you know, a couple other subjects and, um, and, and God confirmed it. It's so funny. So the week I talked about peace, we were at, um, down at the lake and we had visited church on Sunday and specifically a, a minister came over to me and just kind of in the side of my ear put his hand on my shoulder and um, prayed for me to have a, um, a an additional spirit of peace that like he literally spoke those words into my to my ear and I was like okay thanks God because uh, I you know not that I need to know that his word is true but it is also always helpful to uh get confirmation and i'm a big one on that i i like to confirm things in the word of god and i i, I ask god all the time to send me a confirmation because i question myself a lot and so then last last week i said well we're going to talk about what god says about us and then again sunday the next week which was this last sunday um, we were at, down at the lake again working and um, went to church on Sunday and one of the songs they sang was um, it was about um, what God says about me he I forget what the song was but anyway I was like okay got it and then um, then the the minister preached on burdens and and casting your burdens on him and I you know I was like wow this is, this is a good sermon but in my mind I'm thinking you know I'm doing pretty good on um, helping you know being aware that I need to cast all of my the things that I carry on God and um, there's a lot there's a lot that you know I don't share all the things that are going on in my life but um, there's some pretty um, 
weighty, um, sorrowful things that I carry. And uh, so I was thinking, well, you know, this is a good reminder, but yeah, I'm, I'm good. I already do this, you know, but I, I enjoyed it and I took my little notes like I normally do. And then Sunday night, um, I literally did not sleep all night. And it was, I was kind of questioning, I was like, what? Why am I not? Why am I experiencing this? And it was just like an a like a an attack of fear. Like um, I don't know really how to explain it, but I recognize it because it was it's something that I had dealt with in the past multiple times um, over the last um, few decades. So I was like, okay, I recognize what this is, but it did not make sense to me at all. And I was like, well, so Monday come Monday, man, I was rough because I, I had not slept. And then a couple of things happened on Monday that seemed to uh, solidify and prop up. Like I, my mindset was already kind of weary and worn down from the sleepless night and the, the anxiety and the fear. And then a couple of things happened on Monday, one thing Monday morning, then one thing Monday night that was like, yeah yeah see you things are not as good as you think they are and um yeah like it really rocked my um foundation like it's pretty significantly and so um monday evening i had i had to uh, make a trip down to the lake for something so i, I basically just kind of wallowed in in whatever was go like in my brain you know Tuesday came back to St. Louis and then um, kind of struggled through the day and um, finally Tuesday afternoon I know this is a long story but I, I want everybody that watches these to understand that I'm not sitting up here like on a on a little uh, high place and you know the world is crashing around me and you know beneath me that is not the case I I live in the same the same world that everybody else does so Tuesday I finally got to where I was like um, I gotta go upstairs and I gotta shut the door and I gotta unload some of this and I realized that not only was the sermon timely but that I had been carrying this more this everything and just that episode on Monday night and Monday just was kind of the tipping point that kind of was like, Bleh. you know, I can't do this anymore. So I came upstairs and, you know, had a really good um, talk with God and kind of like offloaded a bunch of stuff. And so um, I can't say that I'm like bounced back with like all of my normal um, sparkling energy, but but God is teaching me something through this. He's He's reiterating something through this. And and just an aside, whatever it is that Satan comes at you with, the, he he doesn't. He's not smart enough to go pick a new thing. He is going to pull out the same devices every time he wants to trip you up. So when you you think well I'm past that and I don't have to deal with that anymore or that that dart can't penetrate to my heart anymore it can but you can resist it so I spent some time up here this is kind of like my office slash war room and I've got all my photos over here and I can get over here and like talk to God or you know over here or wherever but I spent a lot of time yesterday resisting and asking God to to go to battle for me because I I really needed His strength yesterday and and every day. But anyway, so just to let you know, like I live the same place everybody else lives, and and life life is rough sometimes. And you know, just because you don't know all of the details and the facets of somebody's life, don't assume that just because they look put together on the outside that they're all put together on the inside and that 
Anyway, so what I'm going to talk about today is we, were, we talked about last week about um, defining the relationship with God and how we should see Him according to His Word and, and kind of take the filter off that's been either put on us or that we've picked up and filtered God through that might not be accurate. So I'm going to talk today about what God says about us. So give me just a second. Okay. So to begin with, let's establish that if you feel unloved or unlovable, that is not the case. God says that you are loved. And and God is love. The scripture says that God is love. So he is that complete embodiment of love. And he loves us. And it says in Romans 8, 38 through 39, um, for those of you that are taking notes, Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ our Lord. So, I know we've heard this scripture millions of times. This is not in the King James Version. Um, but what I want to emphasize is... You know, the scripture just could have said, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate it is from God's love. And then, in you know, in our mind, we'll be like, well, what about this? And, well, that happened, and then this happened. So, Satan's objective is separation and isolation. If he can get us separated and isolated from the pack, he can pick us off, and we will starve. If we are separated from the flock, then we're we're prey target i mean we're just we're we're you know we're in danger so the objective of the enemy of our soul is to separate us or make us think in our mind through deception that we've been separated from god's love and it's not possible Yes, we can walk away from a relationship with God, but His love will always be there. His love is never going to leave us. We can do the worst thing ever. And yes, we might choose to not spend eternity with God through some of the things that we've done, but it does not change the fact that He loves us and He will always love us. He will. N it, the Bible says... He will always love us. And there's nothing that can separate us from His love. We can be separated from His Spirit and not walk according to His will, but we can never be separated from His love. So no matter where you are, God's love is there. And it is within reach. And I love the fact that it talks about our fears for today and then the concerns that we have for tomorrow. Um, God's love can conquer that. Um, when you feel weak or weary, God says you're strong. In Psalms uh, 18 and 32, it says, God arms me with strength and he makes my way perfect. Um, I could deal with a little perfection right now and and I don't even know see I'm not aware of the things that God has gone before me and and pulled out of the way sometimes um, some of the things that we're struggling with and climbing back over are are things that we have built and put in the way and and unfortunately as uncomfortable as it might be sometimes on our path back to a um, deep relationship with God we do have to climb over some of these 
edifices and these things that we've built. So, but with God as our strength, He can help us walk through those things. Um, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Um, I am fully dependent on God to be my strength, to fight for me, and to hold me up right now. Like, I need that. We all need that. But sometimes we just get to clicking along and we think, oh, I'm, I'm carrying this load. I'm doing just fine. And then that one other little thing happens and we find ourselves face down in the dust wondering what happened. And what it amounts to is... We weren't really letting God carry our burdens. If we see ourselves as too scarred up to be used, God looks at us through the lens of Calvary and He sees us as healed. In Isaiah 53 and 5 it says but he was pierced for our transgressions our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his stripes we are healed so scars there's nothing wrong with having scars what we don't want is to be walking around with open unhealed wounds there's there's not there's no shame in having a scar don't be ashamed of your scars um scars say that you've lived you've loved you've lost um scars are a testimony to the wounded that say okay healing is possible and and healing is a process and even after you're healed and you have a scar, you continue to have to work towards optimum performance in whatever that area is. So, so don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't um, feel less than because you came from a, a, a battlefield, because you came from a, maybe a, a place of abuse or neglect. And you, you feel, you look at the person next to you and you're like, well, you know, look at them. They're pristine. There's not a mark on them. Don't, don't do that. Like, keep, keep your focus on God and, and ask Him how He sees you. Because He was scarred for us. God made flesh, did not have to came down in the form of Jesus Christ and he took such a horrific punishment and his body was scarred why would we think that even in a spiritual sense that we should not encounter things that leave a, a scar Jesus was scarred but even in our scarred state we can thrive we can heal, we can become strong, and we will have a testimony to victory and to triumph. So don't, don't look at your scars with regret. When you feel like you have sinned too much or you've gone too far, God says you're forgiven. In uh, 1 John 2 and 12, John was writing to the church, to those that had been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost um, after Pentecost and on the day of Pentecost. He was writing to them and he said, Little children, your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. And, and there's so many scriptures on that. Now, I've got a lot of uh, information to cover, so I'm not going to go into like a whole list of scriptures. But... If we ask God to forgive us and we are sincere, He will forgive us of our sins and never remember them against us. Now, we have to understand that humans don't have the ability to not remember things. 
So people are going to remember what you did. And people are going to judge you for what you did. And they will continue to judge you for what they for what you did. Unless they also have an encounter with Calvary and realize the the amount, amount of things that they've been forgiven for and that even though we may recall people's past that we shouldn't judge them and that shouldn't be what we see as soon as we see them. We should see them and ask God to help us to see people as He sees them, as redeemed, as forgiven, as loved, as worthy. So um, God help us to um, take off the goggles of judgment and put on our vision like God has and ask Him to give us a clear view of, of who we are in Him and outside of Calvary. That way we can really understand the magnitude of all of the things that we've been forgiven. That way we can look at other people and with compassion and instead of judgment. Um, if you feel abandoned or marginalized, God says you're adopted. And, and I think this is so, so beautiful. Um, Galatians 3.26 says, Paul says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So, uh, in this passage, I did a little quick um, study. Paul uses this a Greek word, which I'm not even going to attempt, but in the Greek translation, he's talking about spiritual adoption. He, he uses a word in the Greek that translates to son placing, um, meaning like given a place as a natural born son. So son placing. Um, it's a place that we don't deserve or belong as a natural born son or daughter. Um, but in the Roman law, um, adoption, if someone was adopted into a family, their old association and their old family was completely, it, it's like as if it had never happened. It was completely obliterated. Um, if there were debt that might have been passed from parent to child, that was 100% wiped away so seeing that when God adopted us as sons and daughters we took on his name we became his inheritance so an adopted child in, in according to Roman law was on the level with natural born children there there was no difference in their inheritance I mean they couldn't it was illegal to make a difference in in that um, so their old law included all life, including all of their debts, their identity, everything was as if it had never happened. So that's what God did for us. He adopted us and it's as if we were never that old person. When all of those things that we did, he, he wiped all those debts away. We come into the family debt free. So we, that's why we can stand before God boldly and, 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 and make our request known is because we're His child. We have that position and that He's given that to us. We didn't earn it, but He gave it to us. So this is why, and this kind of goes off on a tangent, why we must be born again. This is when Jesus was telling Nicodemus, who was a Jewish religious leader, so he, he already knew like every everything about the what written word of God existed up until that time. This man knew it. He was very educated and um, he, he came at you know, had to sneak off to even go and have this like conversation with Jesus. And and that's why Jesus said unto Nicodemus, even though Nicodemus had all of this knowledge and all of this prestige, he said I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's in John 3 and 3. If you want to go read that story, it's um, it's very telling. So, uh, God, in Ephesians 1 and 5, and I'll, I'll leave this alone, but I think this is so important that we understand that we're not just someone that, that God has decided to forgive and we get to exist and, you know, go to heaven. 
we are his child and those of you that have children will understand like what that means like that that's a big deal i'll do things for my kids like whatever like i'll lay down my life for them like there's nothing i won't do for my kids god decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself by jesus christ it says and this is the christy translation version this is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure he didn't do it out of a sense of obligation like well if i don't adopt them they're going to end up like no tell them where or you know i'm going to adopt these people because i want to look a certain way no he wanted to do this and it gave him great pleasure to adopt us okay moving on feeling unhappy God looks at us and he wants to give us joy. We can have a a bad day and still have joy. We can have sorrow and still have joy. The the two can exist together. They're not exclusive like well I if I this happens I don't have joy. Joy is something it is a state of being that only comes from having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, John 15 and 11, so Jesus was talking about um, the vine and the branches. He was telling them this, this kind of story, like, I am the vine, you are the branches, abide in me, blah, blah, blah. So that's in uh, John chapter 15. And, and then he goes, I tell you these things so that you will be filled with joy yes your joy will be overflowing and i can tell you like today i don't know if y'all can tell i'll i visibly i look like i've been through the ringer and i physically i feel like it but in spite of all of that i am filled with joy because i know that no matter what happens like God has got my best interest at heart and he's going to work things out for his good and he's going to give me strength and and at the very least he's going to give me a testimony and there's there's nothing that's going to shut me up like okay you've thrown this at me you've thrown that at me okay well I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to give God the glory and then you're just going to come up with something else because this is what it is so um Peter was saying that in, in 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9, um, that even though you have not seen him, you love him, believe in him, and are filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy because the end result of all of this is salvation for our souls. So that's 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. And yes, this is uh, very much translated by me. So, it says we have joy because we know that relief is coming you know if i if i don't have my prayers my deepest prayer answered in this life if i don't see it then i know that it's still going to happen but i might not see it but one day i will see the end result of it um it says the end result of all of this. So to me, the all of this is all of the things that we contend with and we deal with and that we live in on a daily basis. The end result of all of this, everything we go through, is a salvation for our soul. Feeling afraid? Have fear? God looks at us and he says you're powerful. So in Second Timothy 1 and 7, everybody's familiar with this scripture. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So, knowing that God does not give us fear, let me remind us all, and I am speaking to me, I am encouraging myself in the Lord today. Fear does not come from God. love god's love casts out fear and it says here god has not given us a spirit spirit of fear so god didn't give you that so resist it and say nope 
that's not for me. I ask that I resist it and I ask God, please send it right back to where it came from. Not for me. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. God will take our fear and replace it with power through Him and the ability to love in the face of some pretty tough circumstances. He will enlarge our capacity to love. So there's just some situations and some people that challenge our capacity to love as a as a finite human being. But God says he's given us a not a spirit of fear but of power okay we got power through the uh our relationship with god and through the holy ghost and love so why in the in the face of fear do we need love because perfect love which is god's love casts out fear so we need that love we need when we are attacked by fear whatever the subject of our fear is my advice and my um, what I pull out of this by breaking it down is I need to ask God to help me love the person that is the source of causing this fear and this anxiety and this uncertainty and this unsettledness in my life and the hurt. Okay, God, help me love them. Create love for me, for in me, for them. Um, enlarge my capacity to love them help me to love them because i'm not feeling it you know there's all these things you can ask for god but it says he has given us a, the spirit of love and a sound mind now um we are to put on the the helmet of when we put on the whole armor of god like that those are things that like if you're being challenged in these areas go back and read um the armor of god and like go through it and pray it and and like step by step put all of those things back on anytime that you feel that but um, in addition to giving us power love and in, enlarging our capacity to love he is going to give us a mind that is stable settled and peaceful a sound mind not a mind that is like scattered and and fractious and um, unhealthy he's going to give us a sound mind one that's stable and steady and rooted in him feeling and on the subject anxious and worried God looks at us and he says peaceful this is his will for us this is how he sees his people he says peace I leave you my peace I give you not as the world gives let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's John 14 and 27. So fear, disorder of any kind, chaos, confusion, none of that comes from God. So anytime that you are experiencing anxiety, fear, disorder, chaos, confusion, all of those things know that that is not of God and that is not his will for you resist those things resist them the Bible says if you resist the devil he will flee from you so using the Word of God using the power of God's name I cannot stress enough how using the Word of God is the key to resist in the devil even Jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness and and Satan came at him with scriptures even Jesus could have said poof be gone but he instead told Satan he said it is written so I tell you today whatever's going on in your life your answer is it is written So, if you're feeling worthless and not special, God looks at you and he says, valuable and wonderfully made. There's a lot of uh, stuff going on in our world right now about, um, you know, people going against the, the creation of God and, and um, changing what he has called beautiful and what he has called perfect and what he called good. And... Um, and, it, and it's causing a lot of 
like division and um, the re end result is a lot of uh, seems like a, a lot of mental instability and disability and unhealthiness so uh, in Psalms 139 and 14 it says I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made so we were not haphazardly accidentally made we were fearfully and wonderfully made we were made with a thought process and detailed like fearfully means like it with with respect to how the process goes it wasn't a happenstance you're not a cluster of cells that won the lottery and actually got to be walking the earth you're fearfully and wonderfully made and it says your works are wonderful and I know that full well so this Psalms 139 and 14 and one thing that stood out to me about this because it's very easy for us to look at God's natural creation, the trees, the mountains, the majestic mountains, the ocean, um, birds, you know, wildlife, you know, just flowers, all these things. It's very easy for us to look at God's creation, his, our surroundings, our environment, and go, wow, beauty, majesty perfection and then we turn our eyes to the creation that God made to be his companion and we speak negativity and we speak death and we speak curses on not only our own selves but others so the next time that you are looking at God's creation and you're like, wow, that's beautiful and that's perfect and that's amazing and the stars and like just the order of the universe, know that He put even more um, thought into human man than He did all of those other things. Those other things He, he spoke into existence but man he made in his image so we know that God's works are wonderful we know that full well we are also his work and his creation so let's turn some of that admiration for God's creation on the fact that he created us for a purpose and he created us in the state that we are in for a purpose. It says that John 3, 16, and we all know this. It says, for God so loved. He says we're worth it. We were what drove him to Calvary. His love for us made him go to Calvary for us. His blood purchased us. The thing that gave him life, he gave up to purchase us. So... Stop talking about God's creations. And and I am talking to myself because that is one of the things that I struggled with over the week was like this thing that had been kind of a, a I guess, a strong man over my life for a lot of years. And uh, it came back with a vengeance. And it was just like, where did this come from? God made me. I can't look at myself and go, you should look like a 20 something year old woman and you should be able to you know f like you can't do that to yourself i'm 50 years old i've had three kids like i can take it's good care of my body and we're supposed to be healthy and vibrant in order to be able to serve god to the to the fullest extent but we can't look at ourselves and go well i'll never be able to live up to that and wow um, you know what if this and that and the other like we don't do that don't do that God made us he created us he loved us let's take care of his creation let's let's um, you know nurture it and and treat it well but don't talk bad about it if you feel like you're without purpose 
know that God created you with a purpose. Um, the most um, beautiful example of that to me is in the book of Esther. And her uncle had the spiritual wisdom and insight to say this most well-known and iconic phrase, perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. So for the moment that you think I have no purpose, lean into God and, and ask Him to help you grow in your purpose and to help develop that in you. And know that you were created for a reason and for a purpose. And it's a purpose that nobody else can feel. Like if, if you're not doing it, the Bible says it, that, that the stones would cry out. So there is not another human to do what God called you to do. So if we don't do what God called us to do, a stone is going to take our place. Not another person. It's just going to go undone. Let's make sure that we are the shining light on God's purpose for others. And, and, and shine in the light of, of God's purpose for others. So if you see um, talent and gifting in someone and you see them kind of struggling a little bit, encourage them to, to give that gifting and talent to God and then, you know, He'll multiply it. You know, He, he can do amazing things with, you know, five, what was it, five loaves and two fishes? Yeah, you know, he, he can... He can take your little, your little lunch and feed a lot of people with it. So trust him with your purpose. Let's see, I'm trying to hurry through this so this is not too too long. So I'm gonna skip a lot of pages. Um, if you feel alone, know that God is with you. In uh, Joshua one and nine, it says, "Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go." If we are committed to Him. And we are walking in Him. Wherever we go, He's right there. He is right there with us. If you feel hopeless, know that God looks at us and He says, They have hope through me. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your well-being and not your destruction, to give you future and hope. You feel reje rejected? God looks at you and says, uh, you're not rejected. You're mine. You belong to me. It says in uh, Isaiah 43 and 1 says, Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. You are mine. If you feel like you're a failure, and we all do. We all have those moments where we feel like, Well, I really messed that up. God looks at us and he says, Nope, you're victorious. Thank God because he gives us Victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ. Um, and my, um, in conclusion, um, my encouragement to you is to get close to God through His Word and prayer. And don't forget to surround yourself with like-minded people that want you to be whole. There are people that might be in your inner circle that may not want you to be whole because the brokenness in you makes them more comfortable with the brokenness in them but we can become whole in in christ and we can share our our um repaired and healed parts with people that are broken and give them hope there there's there's no need to live in brokenness and in um, disrepair and in a wounded state. Not when we have the great physician, the healer in our corner. There's no need for it. I encourage you to write down scripture that is encouraging and that speaks to your situation. Three by five cards, stick them everywhere. Sticky notes, stick them everywhere. Um, tuck them into notebooks, put them in your purse, put them on, tape them to your desk, um, tape them, you know, wherever, um, stick them on your refrigerator. Um, write it down there's something about writing the word of god that that just it brings it to life it's it's like you coming in to agreement with god on something that he said and that is true um and uh speak life like 
talk to yourself in a way that speaks life and then in turn speak life to other people. Don't join in with negative speaking. If you have to exit the conversation, exit the conversation. If you can't bring life to the situation, remove yourself from the situation. And talk to God and don't forget to practice the pause. Listen. Practice the pause. When you pray, if you're like, well, I don't know how to hear the voice of God yet. I'm new at this. So after you have your prayer time, go and open your Bible and flip it open to two or three different places and, and scan and read. And more times than not, God is going to speak to you through something in his written word. If you haven't, like, I'm still learning on, like, how to discern this, the voice of God. Like, and I, I guess because I've heard the scripture my whole life there's a lot up there you know a lot of scriptures come to mind but I'm just like okay I want to make sure that I'm hearing the word of God well you know the Satan is not going to encourage you I can tell you that he's not going to tell you like things are going to be okay or he's not going to tell you to like keep praying keep reading the Bible um, he's not going to tell you that God is your you know your salvation that he is your fortress he's not going to tell you those things so tell yourself those things and then eventually the the voices of of those things will drown out all of that other stuff and then when those those thoughts come to your mind let them stop and then go okay where did that come from and what's the source test it see where it came from before you allow it to enter your mind and to set up residence um Practice the pause. Listen to God. Listen to people that are speaking into your life, that are speaking good things into your life. Listen to those people. You don't have to take everything they say, but listen. If you've got someone that's encouraging you, um, you know, listen to them. Um, Isaiah 31, it's just in conclusion. 31, 20, 30, 21 says, whether you go right or left. And so this is kind of a, a, a little instruction. It says, whether you go right or left, your ears will hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. And you're like, well, well what does that mean? What, what is the way and how do I walk in it? Uh, we already know the way. The I am, the God of the Old Testament, Jesus our Savior, is the way in John 14 and 16. So let's walk in it, be encouraged, and in turn, encourage someone else. Uh, if you would like to do a one-on-one -on -one Bible study, please um, drop me a comment below this video, and I will get in touch with you, uh, women only, for the one-on-one -on -one Zoom Bible study. Um, and I just uh, hope that this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that me being transparent is um, is a testimony to you. Um, and and in closing, just just know like in, in Revelations it talks about Satan, the accusers of our brothers and sisters. He, he says Satan is constantly before God, accusing God. Uh, telling God, accusing us before God day and night. So he's a busy little fellow. So all of the things that we've done in our life or that we're going through, Satan's like, he's before God. It says day and night accusing the people that are saved, the people that are walking with God. Satan is before God day and night going, yeah, you know, that Christy, yeah, I know what she did, and blah, 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 and, you know, it won't be long before she's going to do that again, and, you know, da, 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 and he's constantly, before God, like, holding up this bag of the old me, and um, he's constantly, before God, going, yeah, I know what so-and-so did, and you see them, they're over there, they think they're, you know, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And he's constantly day and night before God. But it says that they, talking about the saints, the people that are filled with the Holy Ghost, says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So I, just like you, are, am the recipient of that amazing mercy and grace that was shed on Calvary, the blood of Jesus Christ. And... I will be and you will be an overcomer by the word of your testimony. Share your testimony. Tell people that they can find uh, peace and love and um, strength and belonging and purpose in Jesus Christ. So go be encouraged and be an encouragement to one another. Have a great day.